Recently, This is America and the World traveled to Japan. Over the next few programs, we'll explore more of the unique culture, traditions, and technology that makes Japan so special. We'll visit parts of the country that visitors rarely get to see and experience. Japan is a country of many islands. There are four main islands, and on this program, we'll travel up north to Hokkaido and its capital city of Sapporo. This massive island, which is close to Russia, is home to incredible natural beauty, an exceptional history of its indigenous people and pioneer settlers, and plays a key role in Japan's economy. This is America Visits Japan. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. Tourism, Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services. In the capital city of Sapporo, we visited with Hokkaido's incredibly popular governor. She welcomed us to the governor's residence and educated us on the many distinctive facets of life in Hokkaido. Hokkaido, what makes it so special, so unique? First of all, Hokkaido is a large island. The Hokkaido's land occupies about one-fourth of the total national land of Japan. The also, climate is quite different from other parts of Japan. We have uh, cold winter, cool summer. So I believe there are differences in the environment and climate. That's what the people from other regions really like. Is the culture of Hokkaido different than the rest of Japan? Yes, I believe the culture in Hokkaido is quite different from other parts of Japan. And Hokkaido has a quite short history of development. We have only 150 years of history here. And since the start of the development of this island, many people came to this island to help develop this land. Hokkaido's modern history is in some ways similar to the frontier history of the American West. Hokkaido's native Ainu people have lived in the region for hundreds of years before expansion from the south in the 1800s developed the region. Hokkaido has worked hard to preserve its rare history. We visited the historical village of Hokkaido and the Hokkaido Museum. So first of all, this museum deals with the prefecture of Hokkaido as a whole. So the content is the nature and history and the culture of the prefecture of Hokkaido. So the main objective is to invite the local people, the Hokkaido residents, to come here to this museum and then to understand what kind of lifestyle the Hokkaido had in the ancient, ancient time. So just make the people understand that we have also very long history, but sometimes they think that our history is very limited and very short. The, the Ainu people is a people who used to live, of course, in Hokkaido, not only Hokkaido, but also in Sakhalin, Sakhalin and then also in Krill Islands. And then they shared the same culture first, and then language, and the same consciousness, or we can say sense of value. Those are the exhibits of the tools and the objects and then things which used to be used by Ainu people dating back 
150 years ago up to 80 years ago. We are sitting in front of uh, uh, a dwelling, right? And tell me a little bit about what we're looking at here. This is a very traditional house of Ainu people dating back 150 years ago up to 70 to 80 years back. And what makes the uh, house so special? So this is the house which we restored as a house of Ainu people, looking at and observing all the things we can understand, firstly, the tradition of Ainu people, and then also the spirit of Ainu people. So the people from uh, mm. this area, mm. the Ainu people, mm -hmm. were they uh, agriculture or hunting or fishing? Yeah, native people, Ainu, Ainu people was hunting people. Hunting people. Yeah, very different from other part of Japan. Japanese were worse agricultural people, mm -hmm. but Ainu people was hunting people. Hunting people. Yeah. How old would the native people go back? How long would they go back? More than thousands of years. Thousands of years? Thousands of years. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Very long history. Aha. Uh -huh. At what point does Hokkaido become part of Japan officially? Just roughly. Officially. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, officially uh, 18, uh, 1869. Oh, 1869. A new government, a local government, mm -hmm. in that year. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the importance of the village? Our concept uh, is how our ancestors open new land, how they challenge, and how they made uh, our new society a new land. It's our concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how did they go about making that? new land? Very challenging, uh -huh. very challenging. What were the challenges? Uh, first, we have very severe, I mean, oh, severe natures around here. Uh, it was very, very cold uh, then now, very cold in those days. Mm -hmm. And many people died uh, for, them, mm -hmm. for that. So, um, and they can't grow, I mean, vegetables or rice in this new land cause too cold. So in the building that we're now in, mm -hmm. that we're now seated by this uh, fire here, mm -hmm. what was this building? Was this a home for someone or what? This, this building mm -hmm. for fishermen. Yeah, in those days, uh, fishing was very important for Japanese industry, as I said. So this area for uh, laborers from Honshu area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how many people would live in this building? Um, about 50 fishermen. 50 fishermen, 50 fishermen would live in this building? Yeah, only three months a year, only springtime, but 50 people live the, here. Ah, mm -hmm. what happens in the other buildings? Each of the houses, they have own history. Uh -huh. So many people came from Honshu area to open new land. Some people came from Kyushu, some people came from Shikoku. All over Japan, they came to open new land. So when we walk around uh, the village, mm -hmm. what are some of the different uh, houses and buildings that we see? In Hokkaido, oh, we are very new people from Honshu area. Mm -hmm. So we don't have very gorgeous houses like Kyoto, a very traditional houses in Kyoto. But we have, we can see um, very, I mean, uh, pioneers. We can, we can know pioneers' life, ordinary pioneers' life, very severe life. We can see. Mm -hmm. So uh, each house is, was not so gorgeous, but we can, uh, we, we can feel how they lived. In America, uh, they know how pioneers act, how how pioneers try, and. If they want to know that in Japan, please come our village. It's our, I mean, concept. Because of this history of Hokkaido, people in Hokkaido are very open-minded. They always welcome people from other outside, from outside Hokkaido, 
And this atmosphere and the unique culture here, these are something that attracts people to Hokkaido. Would you say that uh, Hokkaido is a good place to live? Yes, I believe Hokkaido is a very good place to live. Although it's quite cold in winter, we have a very comfortable weather, climate in summer, and the greenery is very beautiful. And also the white of snow is so beautiful. We have a very good delicacies, good food. We have many things to enjoy here in Hokkaido. What is the population? of Hokkaido? Hi, well, relatively small population we have here in Hokkaido. We have 5.5 million people living in Hokkaido, and one-third of them are in Sapporo. It means 1.9 million people living in Sapporo. This is the capital city here. We've been here for three days visiting Hokkaido. Nature is absolutely beautiful here, huh? mountains, parks, lakes, but also volcanic mountain as well. Is that dangerous? In Hokkaido, we have many volcanoes, and uh, we have, that's why we have to keep observing the accurate situation, conditions of those volcanoes. That are one of the roles of our administration here. Ah, so your job. Uh, yes. Of course, in cooperation with the national government. Tell me about Mount Usu. Mount Usu erupts every 30 years. Each eruption changing the form of the mountain. Hmm. So this is an active volcano mountain, huh? Yes, it is. In 2000, the mountain erupted under the route 230 and destroyed the road. There was no casualties because always earthquake happens before the eruptions. So we can predict when it's going to happen so that even we lost the route 230, everybody was safe. Before the mountain erupts, we always have cracks on the street and the craters, you can see the, even see the craters on the street. In 2000, some parts of the ground were lifted up about five meters. So there will be a warning. A, uh, is, there is a warning before the eruption, is that correct? The specialist about earthquake is watching the mountains through the earthquake detectors in 365 days during the year, so they can tell you when it's happened. In 2000, uh, we predicted that will happen very well, so we were all safe. How many people live in this area? It's about 16,000 people here, and they all live in the area when mountain eruption happens, they need to evacuate. So do the people here live in fear of the volcano erupting? I believe some people have fear. However, we have this specialist always checking the earthquakes. The uniqueness about Mount Usu is we definitely have earthquake before the mountain erupts. So, in a case, specialists can provide us the right information when to evacuate. So people have to coexist with the mountain. Yes. That's right. We've said that Hokkaido is a good place to live. Is Hokkaido a good place to work? Yes, I believe Hokkaido is also a good place to work. And we have all a manufacturing industry, but it's not so large here. Rather, we depend more on the tourism resources, and uh, we have a large amount of production in terms of uh, paddy rice and uh, upland crops. And the number of dairy cows in Hokkaido is the largest in Japan. We also have a good fishery uh, business, and uh, we have a uh, number one production amount in, in agriculture and officially fields. We have uh, good food. We produce tasty food, and they are also safe. And uh, one-fourth, a quarter of the fishery products produced in Japan are from Hokkaido. We have a good production of timber. It's also number one in Japan.
Young people all over the world may be familiar with Hatsune Miku. She's a technological creation and a Japanese icon who's about to tour the United States in her live hologram concert. Far from the tech centers of Japan, amidst its farming, timber, and manufacturing industry, Hokkaido is the unlikely home to Krypton Future Media, the tech company that created Miku. Krypton makes its music software available to the general public to write their own songs, have Krypton characters sing them, and produce their songs into short videos. Krypton CEO explains. How did Miku come about? Miku, uh... Well, the Miku was born in the month of August in the year of 2007 as a software. We had a technology first, but so we needed to establish or create a sort of an icon, icon to produce this technology. So the Miku was needed. And then with the aid of what we call vocal aid, amateur people, the ordinary people, could create their own personal song with the aid of what we call vocal aid. How does it work that someone can come up with some lyrics or some music and marry that into some of the characters? Just immediately after the giving birth to the Hatsune Miku, we have created or established what we call posting site on the internet. So uh, this on posting internet, the amateur, not professional people could post their illustration, their music, and their lyrics. So I can uh, create a, a, a song, feed it into the internet, post it on the internet, post it, pick out one of the characters and have that character sing my song. So actually what happens is that most of the people, most of the amateur or fans, what they, how they do posting is that they have, well, they have created their own songs and then they pick up already the illustrations which they really like, one or two illustrations, and then they will make the movie using the illustrations and then they will post. Magic. Tourism big. Lots of people coming, uh, skiing, hiking, uh, biking, uh, snowboarding, nature parks. This is a good place to play, huh? Yes, uh, we can enjoy nature in nature. And Hokkaido is known for its powder snow. The quality of snow is so good. This is the only place that you can enjoy powder snow in Japan. So many people from both inside and outside Japan visit for enjoying skiing on the powder snow. Especially the Niseko area is famous. It is a kind of model district for the investment in tourism. So you in, encourage that investment? Yes. <laughs> so we're in Hokkaido. Yes. Hokkaido is one of the islands, a big island, very north of uh, what we would call the main island. Huh? That's right. Yeah, and Hokkaido is a little bit different to the rest of Japan in that it's a bit of the new world. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot, um, it's a, it doesn't have the history and, and, and a lot of the quintessential Japanese culture that the rest of Japan has, um, but it offers so much more in terms of the nature and all of the beautiful stuff. This time of the year is a bit of everything, bit of, a bit of, bit of rain, bit of sun, um, but it wouldn't surprise me if we had a bit of snow later. There's actually snow predicted for tomorrow, in fact, I think. So if the snow's en route, it's not going to be long now when everything will be covered in white. Wow. When uh, that uh, area behind us is uh, snow-capped, how much snow will get on the ground here? Well, um, I mean, this is one of the snowiest areas in the world. And we were actually, uh, as of last year, the snowiest resort in the world. So we can get upwards of 15 meters of snow in any winter season. And the pile-up can very much, and the base could be easily three to four meters by the end of winter. 
So it's an incredible amount of snow. Um, and it's not just the quantity, it's the quality. The quality of the snow is unbelievable. And we're very famous for the, the, the Hokkaido powder, which is, you know, everything that it's, it's, um, it, it, it boasts to be. It's soft, fluffy, fantastical snow. Let's go back and talk a little bit about Niseko. Is that the correct pronunciation? Uh, Niseko, yes. Niseko. Oh, yes. you say Niseko. Uh, as a part of Hokkaido, big now growing international resort, huh? Absolutely. As a winter resort, we're competing with the big resorts in the world, um, from North America to, um, to, to Europe. So certainly as a winter destination, we're very much on the map and we're very much competing. Um, as a summer destination, now we're really starting to grow that, but it's obviously very, very different. Well, I think from an investment point of view, I think really Hokkaido offers so much in terms of, of, of lifestyle, in terms of, um, of, of something unique to, to any other investment in the area. Um, and, and the fact that we are very much at the starting point of this boom that we're seeing right now. We've got 25 years ahead of us, really, that this, this resort's going to still develop. So that, that's very exciting from an investment point of view. Um, from a tourism point of view, I think the big push now is really driving summer and, and year round. You know, we're not just a winter resort. Our focus again now is, is changing. We're trying to develop the summer. Um, we're, we're creating more opportunities in summer. So I think Niseko, whilst is, is very much on the map as a winter destination, we are a year round and, and soon to be competing as a year round destination. What do you see as the biggest challenge that you have? Hokkaido. Uh, yes, Hokkaido has a vast land. That's why this island is very attractive. But at the same time, there are many depopulated uh, municipalities. So it is very costly to provide adequate uh, administrative service to those uh, areas and municipalities. The Hokkaido's uh, budget is the third or fourth largest in Japan. We have a budget scale of about 3 trillion yen annually. But because of the high cost of administrative service, it is quite difficult to strike balance between revenue and expenditures. And at home, the, in Japan, the housewives are in control of the household budget. And as a woman and a female governor, I always work hard to strike a good balance, a uh, right balance between expenditure and revenue. And in the depopulated areas, we want to see the smiling faces of the aged people, young people, the children and disabled people. For that purpose, I have been working very hard every day. How important is the Trans-Pacific Partnership to Japan and to Hokkaido? As I mentioned before, the manufacturing industry is not so well developed in Hokkaido. We depend more on primary industry like agriculture. So because of the TPP, the tariff rate may be reduced or a tariff may be removed. In that case, that Hokkaido will get more negative impact than the positive impact. Uh, you have been uh, elected and re-elected and re-elected uh, first uh, time 2003, so four, four times. Uh, so as a politician, what is the secret? What is your secret, huh? <laughs> Actually, I don't have any secrets as a politician. And I am a woman, but it, that has nothing to do with election. And I believe that I was elected in a very fair manner. And I have never experienced or felt any challenges or handicaps as a woman uh, governor. And uh, it's true that the number of uh, women, female governors, are is relatively small in Japan in comparison with other countries. But that's why that the female governors can attract attention from the uh, public. For example, the other day I visited Dubai, UAE, and uh, to sell and promote Hokkaido to that country. But at that time, well, actually, we have only two female governors in Hokkaido, and I am one of them. So people in Dubai welcomed me because I was only one of the only two female governors from Japan. So I could get some atten great attention from the local people. So I feel that is the advantage for me. I can use that advantage to strategic strategically 
uh, promote Hokkaido more. Madam Governor, <laughs> thank you so much for our conversation. Richard. <laughs> thank you so much. Enjoy Hokkaido after today. Thank you, we will. For information about This Is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. Tourism, Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services.